Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. Healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Ashley, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, pen, and paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. Okay. We're talking about the armor of God. We're uh, comparing it to Roman soldier armor, and we're looking at what Paul was meaning when he was saying different things to us about spiritual matters uh, compared to Roman armor. Last week, we talked about having our feet covered or our feet shod with the gospel of peace, and today, we're going to look at the shield of faith. I'm going to tell you, I think a lot of us have learned about the shield of faith a little bit incorrectly. We think um, different ideas about what the shield of faith should do or what faith should be. I'll give you a little bit of background. I was raised kind of in the word of faith movement. Everything was really faith, faith, faith. Uh, it, they've been called things like name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, those sort of things, right? We have this confession of faith that we're going to have it all, prosperity movement, healing movement, laughter movement, run around the building movement. Anybody in all that? Some Pentecostals up in the house, all right? Um, so I, I, my roots are, are very much faith. I would call myself a hyper-faith kind of preacher. I wouldn't necessarily identify with the word of faith movement today, all right? But we're looking at Ephesians 6, and today we're going to dive into Ephesians 6, 16. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, or fiery arrows of the wicked one. What we must understand is that the shield of faith had, or, or the, the shield in the Roman armor had a small clip that would attach right to the soldier's belt. And what did we say that the belt of truth was? The Word of God, the Bible, right? The Bible. So I'm going to tell you this, that faith and the Word are inseparable. You cannot separate the Word of God from faith or faith from the Word of God. They must be joined together in your life, all right? Faith, your faith is attached to the Word of God. I'm going to say that again. Your faith is attached to the Word of God. And if you fail to give the Word of God its proper place in your life, it's just a matter of time before your faith will begin to wane. Because the presence or absence of faith is determined by the presence or absence of God's Word. Please, please, please don't think that you're operating in faith, but you ain't never cracked your book. The only thing you could possibly have if you're not in your word is hope, but not faith. Not faith. Faith is attached to the word. It sets, it rests on the word. Your faith rests on the word. And this is what Paul is trying to show us. He's trying to show us how faith comes. Ready? How does faith come? Do you know it? Faith comes by? Okay, stop. And that's where most people do, right? They stop right there. Faith comes by hearing. No. Faith comes by hearing the Word. Faith comes by the Word. Faith comes by the Word. It's transported into us or, or brought into us by either reading or hearing. But faith comes by the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. All right? And, and, and listen, and it's not just hearing it because you can listen to teaching tapes all day and never get faith. Faith comes by hearing and acting upon what you hear. Acting upon what you hear. James says, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of it also. That's when it's activated in your life. So then faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God. You cannot separate faith from the word. You cannot separate faith from the Word. And I'm just going to say that I think that's why a lot of Christians have such a hard time with the Christian life. Why they have such a hard time with attacks from the devil. They don't ever crack the book. Well, listen, could you imagine I'm in my master's program right now through, through the college. I'm actually the first student. I'm not, I'm not just the president. I'm also a client. 
I want to practice what I preached. I didn't want to just get up here and try to recruit people to the college. I'm, I'm a student right now um, t- taking these classes. Could you imagine me trying to pass a master's program and not reading the textbook? I promise you right now, I'm reading six textbooks at one time. At one time for this school. Dear Jesus, pray for me. I don't know what I was thinking. But you couldn't, I can't pass the test. I can't stand in in knowledge if I never read the textbook. And for some reason, we got Christians that think they're going to stand firm in faith, and they don't ever read the textbook. And I'm going to tell you this. You know what's even better than a textbook? A cheat sheet. Come on, right? You ever read the book for dummies? You know, like the cliff notes? I mean, literally, that's what the Bible is. It's God's cheat sheet to us how to live and move and have our being in Christ. But you can't have faith outside the word. Please don't tell me. Please don't tell me that you're a person of faith and power, but you don't ever read the Bible. It can't. It can't happen. All right? If, if, if the word of God is absent from your life, I'm telling you right now, so is faith. And if, you're, and if you're struggling with faith, I bet it's because you're not in the word. And there's no judgment here. There's no judgment. I've been through those seasons. And I have to write sermons. There's been those seasons where I'm like, yo, the Bible sucks. Seriously. I'm, you know, me, me and God are cool with me saying that, all right? <laughs> There are times when I said that, like, I'm so bored reading the Bible. I'm just, it's drag. I'm not getting it. There's been no seasons, right? But in those seasons, I also felt the most tempted I've ever been in my life. It goes hand in hand. If the Word of God does not have an important place in your daily life, it will be impossible to grow in your faith. So let's look at this again. Ephesians 6, 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith where you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Here's some historical background. There's two types of shields that a Roman soldier would have. The first one is called the aspis, which is a smaller, rounded, decorative shield. It would be used in ceremonies and marches and public parades. It was absolutely gorgeous. It had intricate etchings and engravings and carvings on the front. Uh, Even in the middle of it, maybe there was a depiction by an artist of a great battle that that warrior had won. It it would be used for, for decoration and honor and parades, but it would never go into combat because it was so small. It was so small. If, if, a, if an arrow was shot at them, their whole body could not possibly be protected by that shield. They would have to, you know, try to move it, and that's not really what it was designed for. But there was a second type of shield, and this is the shield that Paul is talking about in Ephesians 6.16. When he says, taking the shield of faith, he's using the word thureos, thureos, which the, the, the term in and of itself actually means door, but, it, but it's saying that it was the shield, the size, the width, and the height of a door. Now, at my house, a typical door is like 32 inches wide, 80 inches tall, right? Like, I'm, I'm not that big. So I could easily hide behind that, right? Uh, there's, some, there's some brothers in the back who they have to like duck to go under a door. I don't have that problem. But for me, I could, I could just stand behind that side. And that's what this is talking about. It's a door-sized shield. And that's the kind of shield that a Roman soldier would have. That's the one that he would take into battle. Now, next week, my my staff already told me, because I I did this sermon for them on Thursday, and they're like, listen, you've got so much content about faith, you've got to go two weeks. So we're going to go two weeks on faith. Um, But this this idea of a door-sized shield has two meanings to it, all right? Not only about the size, but your faith is the door to access things in the spirit realm. All right, we're going to talk about that next week. This shield, the Thureos, was much bigger than the Aspis, and, and, and Paul is telling us that the faith that we were given by God 
is big enough to completely cover every aspect of your life. Now, here's what's funny. Most of us been taught, or most of us have believed, that the faith that we have is just a little tiny mustard seed. But that was never the definition of faith. Jesus was just saying, yo, if you had any faith at all, if you had at least mustard seed sized faith, you could speak to mountains. But he didn't say that's the kind of faith that we have. Are, are you getting this? E even that, to think that you only had mustard seed faith is a lack of faith. Why wouldn't you want to believe that you had mountain moving faith? Why wouldn't you want to believe about yourself that you had healing faith, that you had prophetic faith, that you had financial faith? I, I just wonder if you have faith in you. Do you have faith in yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Do you think that you're great? Do you think that you're amazing? Do you believe that everything you put your hands to will prosper and be successful? I mean, do you believe that about yourself? Or do you walk around in constant doubt about you? See, right there is an attack on faith. Not loving you, not believing in you. I'm going to tell you right now, you, I don't care if you're a business owner or what, but you are your greatest pro uh, product. You are your greatest product. You are the sales billboard for your company and for your family. You are the billboard for the kingdom of God. I'm just going to tell you, if your life is a wreck, like really, who would want to be a Christian like you? That's not a real good sales pitch. Man, I'm, life is horrible. Come be a Christian like me. That's not, that's not what God had given to us. He didn't give us mustard seed faith. He gave us door size faith. Romans 12, 3 says this. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But what's the measure? The measure is not a mustard seed. The measure is the through reos. The door size faith. All encompassing faith. The faith that has you covered from head to toe. How much faith has God given you? He's given you enough faith to make certain that you are covered in life. You are covered in life by the measure of faith that God has given you. And I'm going to tell you this. Ready? God has given to every human being the measure of faith. This isn't talking about Christians. Every human being that will ever breathe life, God gave them the measure of faith. Do you know how much faith that is? It's the faith to get saved. It's the faith to put your trust in Jesus Christ. Everyone has it. Will everyone activate it? No. Most of us own a Bible. 2% of us read it. Just because you have something doesn't mean you ever use it. I bet 90% of you got a Planet Fitness membership for $10.99 a month. But do you use it? <laughs> Come on, right? You got to use it. You got to use it. We've all been given faith. We've been given the shield of faith. But if it sits unused, guess what? We're going to keep getting hit by fiery darts. All right, here we go. That's good. Hey, that's good stuff. You're covered head to toe. Let's talk about this shield. This shield covered you head to toe. It was made out of six layers of animal, tanned animal hide. Six layers. Now, one layer is tough, but you take six layers of animal hide and you weave it together, it's almost as strong as steel. It could defend. It was tough. It was rough. It could deflect things. It was a hard shield. Similarly, your faith is extremely tough, and your faith is durable, and your faith can withstand an attack. Got to be behind it. But there is some care. There is some care that you have to put into your faith. Because the shield was made out of six layers of tanned animal hide, it had to be oiled. 
Each morning, the Roman soldier would wake up. He'd take a small vial of oil and a rag. He'd put the oil on the rag, and he would, every morning, he would rub that oil into the tan leather so that it would still remain pliable if he did not anoint it with oil. It would dry up, and it would become brittle, and it could break. Same is with your faith. You need fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit in your daily life with your faith. You cannot live off of a victory or a battle or a time with God from 20 years ago. Man, I, <laughs> I was with a bunch of pastors two weeks ago fishing down in Destin, Florida. I had a great time. And, and it's funny, man, we're all sitting around talking about the old days of Pentecostal days where, you know, sister so-and-so would jump up, start running around the building, smack it to the wall, knock herself out. We thought it was the Holy Ghost, you know. But like the Holy Ghost services where people roll on the floor, people fall down. Come on, you ever been in a service where someone comes up for prayer, right? And someone puts their hand on them, they fall down. And maybe the first one was genuine, but then you start seeing people like, catch me. Don't let me hit the floor. I'm being facetious. I believe in all of it. I do. But you can't live off of what happened 20 years ago. You can't live off of what happened last week. There needs to be a daily anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life. It has to be a constant uplift. That's why on Sundays we take that time during worship and build in some moments where we can just kind of like connect with God and, Lord, speak to me. Touch my heart. Let me lay some stuff down. Without that, without a fresh anointing, you pick up that shield that you haven't used for years. When a problem comes, your kid gets sick. Something happens with your finances. We're going to activate our faith. But you ain't put nothing on that. You haven't worked that leather. You haven't cared for that leather. So now you put that shield up and all of a sudden, wait a second. How come this ain't working like it worked 20 years ago? Because you ain't messed with it. You ain't cared for it. You haven't maintained it. Now listen, I'm not bringing any condemnation. I'm not. I'm just talking facts. Could you imagine never changing the oil of your car? You're going to blow your engine. You're going to blow your engine. And some of us, man, we've just been blowing our spiritual engines because we're not maintaining the things that God's entrusted us with. Put some fresh oil on your faith. Our faith requires frequent anointings of the Holy Spirit. But there's another thing that they would do with these shields. And I got to find out where I'm at in my notes. There's another reason why these shields were made out of animal hide. If they knew they were going into battle, they would take these large shields and they would put them in tanks of water and they would soak them until they were saturated with water. Any idea why they would do that? Let's pull up Ephesians 6, 16 up on the screen here. Ephesians 6, 16, yep. Above all, taking the shield of faith that you can be able to quench the what? Fire, un fuego. The shields would be drenched in water so that if a fiery dart came, a fiery arrow came, and it hit its target, it would instantly be put out. Listen, God never promised that arrows won't fly. God never promised that you wouldn't be a target. God never promised that there would never be a battle. What he promised was, with the shield of faith in place, it will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Uh -huh. Look what it says here in Ephesians 5, 26. The washing of the water by the what? Word. You can't separate faith from the word. You can't separate faith from the Word. They would put their faith into that water that it would be saturated, and your faith must be saturated by the Word of God. And when your faith is saturated by the Word of God, it doesn't matter what the enemy shoots at you. It's extinguished. Now look what it says here. Above all, take in the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench how many? 
Now, here's a really deep understanding of Greek. Do you know what the word all means? All! Like, like all! Well, Pastor Mike, you don't understand how hard my life is. All! All the darts of the enemy. Financial darts. Emotional darts. Disease darts. All the darts of the enemy. I would dare say, we're going to talk about this next week. I would dare say, if the darts are bypassing your faith and sticking into your flesh, the shield probably wasn't in its proper place. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, man, I'm giving away next week. I'm going to give you a little teaser. You ever watch a war movie? Or like a, a Roman soldier movie or one of those things? And, and, and maybe whatever happened, but they didn't have the shield in place and they got hit with a dart. They didn't take the shield and try to fix it. Faith doesn't fix it when you're hit. What do they do? What do they do when they got an arrow or a bullet in them? They scream a word. What do they call for? Medic! Medic! You got to get Jesus in the mix. You got to get Christ the healer in the mix. Come on, somebody. You got to get him in the mix. The, the shield of faith is preventative. It's put out there ahead of you to protect you from the attack. Now, now here's the thing. This thing's the size of a door. Do you know what you're supposed to be doing behind the door? Resting. Resting. <laughs> Do you know what the children of Israel were supposed to be doing in the wilderness when God let them out of slavery? Resting. Instead, they were worrying. See, see, the beautiful part about the shield of faith is when it's in its right place, it should bring rest, it should bring peace. That's why we have our feet covered with peace, because I'm standing in peace. I'm standing in peace because I'm covered in faith. But there's two words that bother me in this whole passage. Put that back up, Ephesians 6, 16. Can anybody pick which two words bother me? It's the first two. Above all. Above all, because we said that the reason why the belt of truth is first is because it's the most important and everything hinges on it. But then he says above all, which in English kind of means like more important than. The most important, the biggest thing, but first, above all, got to do this. But this word, this phrase, above all, actually means, I mean, it, it's the Greek phrase, epipasin. Epipasin. It doesn't mean more important. It doesn't mean better than. It doesn't mean firstly. It means out in front of or covering all. Covering all the other armor, out in front of all the other armor, out in front of your helmet of salvation, out in front of your breastplate of rights, out in front of your sword of the spirit, covering all of you is faith. It's faith. Faith. The only thing that distinguishes between the believer and the non-believer is the activation of their faith. The activation of their faith. The Bible says this, to activate your faith, one believes in their heart, and they confess with their mouth. That's it. That's the activator. That's the activator. The, the, the measure of faith that all humanity has been given, we all have the measure of faith. We want to activate it. Believe in the heart. Confess with the mouth. It activates the faith. Then we learn through our walk with Christ, how to apply faith in different areas. Some will seem to have more faith for finances or more faith for healing. And isn't it funny that we all easily have faith to lay hands on somebody, to be healed and pray for somebody, but when we're sick, it's kind of hard to have faith to get healed. <laughs> we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. The shield of faith. Faith is designed to be out in front where it can completely cover every situation of your life. When our faith is in its proper place, out in front, covering all the positions of your life, it can then do what God intended it to do in 
your life. I'm going to ask you today, maybe your faith has been under attack. Maybe you've got the shield of faith in its proper place, but doggone if it's not full of arrows right now, weighing you down. Maybe there's some doubt that's trying to creep in. You're like, man, I've been trying to stand firm in my faith, and I just, I just feel like I don't even know if I believe anymore. Could I just say that maybe you're just in the battle of faith? Maybe you're losing faith over your marriage. Maybe you're losing faith over your finances. Maybe you're losing faith over your children. Maybe you're losing faith in, in, in God, in prayer. Is God even hearing your prayer? I might say, if you feel like you're losing faith, your faith might be a little dry. Might be a little dry. Might have a bunch of holes in it. But it's still there. It's still there. God said that he will never take back the gifts that he's given to us. Never. Never. Maybe today you see a fresh anointing. Maybe today you see a new touch. If you're here today and maybe you feel like your faith is under attack or you'd like some prayer for that, I'd like to take just a couple minutes in prayer for you. Would you wave at me and say, Pastor Mike, that's me. I need a touch of my faith. I see you. Yes, 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 yes. All over the room. All over the room. All the room. College students, man, you're going out to college and and, and your professors are going to just try to tear that faith apart. Father, we come to the name of Jesus today. And Lord, we pray for a fresh anointing in our lives. That the washing of the word would saturate our faith once again. That we would rub the anointing of the Holy Spirit into our faith once again. Help us to see the way that you see. Help us to be at rest in faith in you. Help us to stop trying to micromanage every aspect of our lives. Help us to surrender to you. Your word says that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Help us to trust in you. I thank you, Lord, today that we could have a new faith, a new profound hope in you. If you're here today and you've never activated your faith by putting your trust in Jesus... I would love to pray a salvation prayer with you today. I'd love to activate that faith with you. And here at Family Church, we do it by praying a prayer. The Bible says, with the heart we believe, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And we would love for you to join the body of Christ today with this prayer. If you'd repeat after me, dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me, to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen or hit the hands up in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room and you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, hey, Pastor Mike, I prayed that prayer for the first time today. Anybody at all as I look across the room? Yeah, I see you back there. Anybody else real quick? Awesome, 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 awesome. We have that same six-day devotional available to you. If you're here and you need prayer for any reason today, we will have care team members at the front and at the high top tables in the back. If you're going through something in your life and you need to make an appointment with one of our counselors, would you reach out to the church office, set up an appointment to see a counselor? Also, please don't rush out of here today. Please take some time. I'm going to be down in the gym. A bunch of staff are going to be down in the gym. We have a great thing set up in the gym today. Grab your kids. If you don't have kids, you can cut straight across right here. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that that we can open a college in the Hudson Valley that will spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you that everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor Josh, and if this message has impacted you in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a few things. First, I would love if you would subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. 
Second thing is, I'm gonna ask that you would take a next step on your journey. And we'd love to help you do that. You can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today. Have a great rest of your day.